Hello Nintendo Chit Chatters, I'm Eddie Ray for NintendoChitChat.com. Welcome to more tutorial videos for RPG Maker Fest on Nintendo 3DS. Shoutouts to NAS Maker for providing a copy of the game. And today's tips, tricks, and ideas number four is all about uh, treasure chests a little bit more and some other little cool tidbits too, guys. So these are some cool ideas for you, tips and tricks which you can use in your own games. So let's get started here. We are right now in my uh, Weston castle uh, exterior has some shops over here which uh, nothing to do yet with these shops and then we also have the castle here which you can eventually go into in my game uh, but we're set up here just for um, I guess this map just to show you a few things we have here now if you watch some of our other tips tricks and ideas and also our let's create episodes recently you will see we have some fire that can cause damage uh, so you could do the opposite of that too. You could have something on your map that actually heals you, uh, whether increasing HP or even increasing magic too. So uh, think about that. Before we get into those details though, let me show you about the treasure chest here as well, because we have a treasure chest down here. Um, this is just easy create. We also have a crate, a wooden crate here. We also have a dresser next to that. So you don't just have to put items inside of treasure chests. We can use a crate if you'd like, or you can use a dresser. Um, pretty much you can put an item in anything. It's just a matter of changing uh, the graphic out and also changing out some of the text too. So we'll show you this. And again, as you guys know, easy create, very simple. I hit the A button, go to easy create, and click on treasure chest. It's very simple. You can import the sample uh, and then kind of tweak things as you go, or you can do it completely from scratch, whatever you guys want to do. Um, this is probably the easiest way to go about it, treasure chest. And of course, then you select your items or gold. Uh, if you want to make some items, go to your database, create um, sample items, import those, or make pretty much brand new ones too. Um, for this case, we'll just do item. Let's pick a charm fruit. Boom. Hit confirm. Perfect. There it is. So what you'd want to do then uh, to make it a crate, very simple. Go to edit. And it's going to be changing the graphic from uh, this treasure chest into a crate. Uh, if you want to change the look of the graphic, of course, for the other treasure chest, you have other treasure chests you can change here as well. Uh, but we're looking for that crate. So let's go over to here. There we go. There's our crate. And what's cool about this in the stock assets, at least, uh, you actually have a closed crate. And then right over here, you have an opened crate, which is pretty cool. Uh, kind of like the treasure chest, you have them closed and also they open. So this has a nice little animation kind of look to it. When you open it up, you actually have an open crate. So we choose a closed one. We go to page two then and graphic. We'll look for the cl uh, closed or actually the open crate, <laughs> as I should say. There we go. Open crate. Cool for page two. And then page three, again, will be the open crate. This wooden crate right over here. Bam. And that's pretty much done. You do want to go into the text here as well on the third page. Uh, because if they go back to this treasure chest or crate and if they investigate, uh, it will pick up a little dialogue box that says this treasure chest is empty. Uh, you can change this and saying this uh, crate is empty or was empty. Pretty simple. Just delete this off. You can say the wooden crate, whatever you want to put in. Uh, we'll just put in for time's sake. The crate was empty. There we go. Cool. And I don't think we have any other dialogue that says treasure chest. We can double check that. Uh, page two has no dialogue. Just all of the variable and things, the item you're getting there. So you can always swap this out too if you wanted to. You can increase quantity, number, or decrease too. Um, you could actually make a, a kind of a trick treasure box. You could actually take items away <laughs> if you wanted to. And you could also put items into a treasure box or whatever too. It's kind of switching things out here and tweaking uh, this easy create import of the treasure box. All right, so it looks like most of the text was just from page three. Cool, there's no text there. So again, you could also change the title here, the event name, so you know what it is. You could put a wooden chest or something like that. But there you go, guys. Now we have uh, a treasure chest uh, that looks like a crate, which may fit the style of your theme uh, or your map or your world more, depending where you are uh, in the developing and designing your own world, basically. This would go pretty well within like a, maybe a market area or something like that. And you could actually hide it amongst other crates too. So. Because treasure chests kind of stick out a little bit. Um, so if you want them to be very, very easy to find, 
Um, you could actually, with the treasure chests, you could put a whole bunch of treasure chests around a certain area and have them empty, then have one or two being filled with items. Uh, these crates here, they can be found in the market area a lot, and then all of a sudden you have one or two that are filled with items as surprises. Um, you have clues, maybe bring them to a certain area to find them as well. Really up to you what you want to do in your game. All right, let's try this out. Um, so we have the crate, and the treasure chest here, of course. And we also have a dresser, too. So same thing here. And we did easy create. We'll open this up. And we did easy create treasure box. And in this case, we have... Uh, what do I have? Giving... Uh, we have... I think it's just gold. Not even sure. But we can test... Actually, it's a key. This uh, dresser will give you a key, which is pretty cool. So in this scenario, guys, uh, we just choose a dresser graphic. And we're using this one right here. It's on uh, page 14. This is the stock assets. Now we chose the bottom of the dresser. Uh, since the dresser in this scenario here is two squares, there's bigger ones, of course, too. There's these big cabinets you could use too. Um, there's two squares here. Uh, so the bottom one is the one that gives you the action, the one that's easy to reach by the playable character. The top one is just an extra graphic on top, um, kind of adding to the top asset of the dresser drawer, making it a complete graphic on the map. And again, we have that. There's no opening uh, dresser drawer for assets, so everything will remain the same here for all three pictures here, as you can see. Um, and again, you could change the text as well if you wanted to. Um, treasure chest, you could say this dresser drawer was empty. Quickly change that. Just so it kind of fits the theme better. I mean, if you have a dresser and your dialogue says the treasure chest was empty, it's kind of lame, right? <laughs> this dresser. There we go, was. There we go. The dresser was empty. Perfect. Cool. So there's little tips and suggestions here for treasure chests, guys. You don't always have to have treasure chests. You can kind of play with things here. You can pretty much make anything give you an item. Uh, it could be any graphic. The graphic is just what it looks like on the map to the person playing your game. So we'll save that. Now let's actually test this out and play that. So, as always, always recommend testing out your game when you make something new, especially a new event. Before you get too far into developing the event, test things that make sure they work for you. So here we are. So here's a treasure chest. Easy create. It's easy, right? Cool. So here we made our little crate box here. We also have one over here. Um, and again, this graphic is pretty cool with the stock assets. It will actually look like it's open. There you go. Cool. Got a charm fruit from that one. This one gave us snake venom. Pretty awesome. And here's a dresser drawer. There we go, got a church key. So it would be more appropriate, I think, to put into a dresser drawer or like a note or a Bible or a book or something like that you can put into there. That's pretty cool. And you can put little hints in your game in the dialogue or on the map itself. You could put a little expression or a little icon above the dresser drawer even. And again, that top asset, guys, does absolutely nothing. Uh, it's just there to add and fill out that dresser graphic so it looks complete on the map. Okay, cool. The other idea is this. You can also use a little satchel kind of burlap bag here with the drawstring. Uh, there is a graphic of that being closed and then opened. Uh, so in this case here, we got water crystals, which is pretty cool. So all of these little things here, you can tweak, uh, to try different graphics, see what you can do with them and uh, really make your game unique with these little tips and tricks, guys. So hope you enjoyed that. Pretty cool. We also have a few more things to show you. So I mentioned uh, in my game, in the tips, tricks, and ideas, I think, and also Let's Create, I started showing off some fire uh, that was moving and causing harm and damage as well, uh, creating some HP loss if you walk into the fire. Uh, so that's a pretty cool idea. Uh, but you can also reverse that as well. You can put items on the map. You can put little place map kind of squares down where a person can walk over, or a heart over, and they can regain some HP or magic. In this case, above here, the characters, we have a little bottle of, looks like perfume or medicine. Looks kind of unique, right? So you walk over it. A little subtitle here, and it gives you some magic. You get five magic. But of course, our magic was already full so it can't fill up any higher. <laughs> but uh, if you do use your magic in the game, uh, this will give you a cool little way to refill magic in certain areas of your map. 
Um, now, of course, you can keep going up to this thing here and refilling over and over and over again. So what you would have to do is put a switch on this to turn it off if you want it to be a one-time thing. Uh, if you want them to use it over and over again and kind of spam it, I guess if your game allows that, you could do that. <laughs> but I didn't put a switch here to show you guys what you could do with it. Pretty cool. So this gives you um, a magic refill of five. You can change any number you want to. Or you can also just do an HP increase as well, uh, kind of restoring some health. Uh, there are churches in the game, which you can do for an easy create. Um, we'll show you that as well really quick. And I'll go into the events here and show you this too. So easy create. Oops, I'm sorry. Delete this out of here. Go to easy create. There we go. Yeah, church. So a church is an easy create option. Uh, this uh, church revives knocked out HP of zero characters. So when characters die or get to the HP of zero, uh, if you're still playing with a character or two in the game, uh, you can go to these church areas in the game and it will revive those characters who were knocked out and revive them basically, which is pretty cool. And you can use this church option, import here, set amount of money, we'll do 20 or 10, that eh, 20 is fine, there we go. And there we have a church. Um, now you can put this lady in front of a church, or this man in front of a church, this is a lady right now. Put them in front of a church, you can put them anywhere, and this could be a person who revives knocked out players, okay? So let's try this out. Yeah, test play here. From the beginning, alright. So we have some fire over here in front of this house. Uh, that will actually cause some damage. Not very much damage, but uh, we're in the beginning of the game here, so they lost 3 HP. So that's pretty cool. You can do that as well. And it keeps doing it. So if the person keeps hitting these fire, you can make like a maze of fire and uh, it can be hard to avoid this. They're going to be losing some HP, right? And in this case, it's the whole party too, losing HP. And sooner or later here... Um... Yeah, Amelia will go down first. Uh, David has 11 HP still. So we'll have Amelia go down. Sorry, Amelia. <laughs> <laughs> cool. All right. All right, so with this church character now over here, we can talk to them. And of course, you can change the dialogue here. If you put them in front of a church, put them anywhere you want, you can change the dialogue to uh, suit your needs and to suit your game. Um, so a prayer costs 20 gold. So we don't have enough gold here, but if we did, we'd pay the 20 gold. We can revive her, but we can go back to our treasure box here, actually. There we go. 200 gold, so there we go. So you see how all this works, guys? You can watch the event execute log up here. And this is just an imported sample, actually, of this church, so you get a cool idea here of how all this works. Yeah. Cool. There, she's back. Cool. Isn't that neat? All right. So I'll show you how some of these little things work. Again, this here is just an imported sample. I just did to show you guys uh, what you could do uh, if you're using the little fire technique here um, and you're the losing hit points. Um, you can have these church people all around your maps, change a dialogue out um, or put them in front of a church area uh, and have them restore uh, and revive knocked out players. All right, so we have this here. Uh, this is just a little kind of medicine perfume looking bottle, and this restores magic. So all this is, is the graphic here. I chose that graphic for this example. Anything you want to do is you can choose a graphic. Event content is pretty simple. So we have the subtitle here, we have our screens fading to black, then we have a quick little subtitle message saying MP went up 5. You can always, of course, change it how you want. Uh, change screen, goes back to original. And then, of course, here, the whole party uh, gets plus 10. All right. Uh, let me see. Actually, it should be 5. So there, we, there we go. Had it off. <laughs> cool. Okay. Yeah, so MP went up 5. That's the message. I always like putting a little message with these events that I make customized. Uh, if you don't have any dialogue, you can put a subtitle up to letting the player know something took place. If you don't, they won't necessarily know because these other things are kind of hidden besides the sound effect. Okay? So then we have the sound effect here. I chose the HP MP heal, which is a good effect. It fits this particular scenario. 
that one right there. Cool. All right, confirm that. So again, this little area here, you just go to um, your status control. And you go down to increase, decrease HP, MP. And you can do it however you want. If you want something to damage the party or a player, uh, you can choose who it may damage or who, who it may help the whole party or just individual characters in the party. Uh, and you can change the number. Okay. And then, of course, uh, you're going to increase HP. You click it there. Uh, of course, increase. You can decrease HP if it was something that, like with fire burning you. Um, if you want to increase magic, you click MP. If you want to decrease magic, there you go. So all kinds of scenarios here where you can create things in your world that help uh, by increasing HP, increasing magic, or decreasing those as well. So lots of possibilities here. But this particular area here is when you go over, you walk to, and it increases your MP, your magic. All right, so it's kind of the opposite effect of us what we did earlier with the fire that hurts you. And again, if you wanted to end, you just put a switch on the end of that first page and second page then, and you activate the second page with the switch so it turns itself off. That way you don't keep going up to this bottle here and reviving or getting your HP back. Um, I think maybe a once done thing would be pretty good. Uh, so once that's done, you can't do it again, and maybe scatter them around some map areas, maybe in some dungeons where they may need to have some increase in HP or magic to really help them out a little bit. All right. So one more thing here, guys, is this fire, okay? I created an item in my database. I'll show it to you right now, actually. Okay, these are all just the tips, tricks, and ideas for you to add to into your game, and you can kind of expand upon these ideas. And uh, let me know how they work out for you and what you do to tweak them and uh, maybe what ideas maybe inspired you from here to create your own. I'm very curious. All right, and items. Go down to number 13 or so. All right, we made water crystals here. These are pretty cool. I was thinking of something to add into my game eventually that I could actually use to kind of put out fire. And this is a pretty cool scenario, actually. So I called it water crystals. I chose this little water graphic. Uh, I was thinking of like a fire extinguisher earlier, but I'm like, well, I think water crystal might be more appropriate. So there we go. Uh, it helps calm deadly fires. That's the description. Uh, you can buy it, so you can actually choose to buy this in a store, or if it's not available for sale in a store, um, which I may or may not make, I'm not quite sure yet, you can make it uh, found in treasure boxes or something. So we'll make it found in a treasure box. We'll go back to that map there. All right, map settings. We are at the Western Castle here. Perfect. All right. So we have an event here for this satchel, this bag, this burlap bag. This event will give you water crystals. Okay. Shade event content. All right. So when we set this up, we did the easy create thing, and we chose the water crystal item to give us. So that's already in there. Perfect. Now here's a scenario. Um, so we have this fire over here, um, and it's in the way, it's in the doorway basically. So let's say this house, it's not yet, but let's say this house was leading to an interior room, another map, which you could do. Uh, create a house interior, create a move to location, or a connecting map location. And let's say the player actually had to go into that house to access another area, an important area with secrets, or a dungeon, or to a, get to a boss or to a character to save them. Uh, this is a pretty cool scenario here. All right, so we go up here. There's a fire. We have to go here. You know, for some reason in the game, they know this will be an area they have to go, right? But they get burned. Okay, so we can't just walk through the fire. That's not going to work. Hmm. Let's explore around here. There has to be something here, right? Well, we'll go to these here. We got snake venom. That's not good. Key? Well, there's no door there. Gold? Okay. What's this here? Ah, oh, water crystals. Ah, there we go. So we go over here. Right? Now, nothing happens, you see? We're not getting burned. Because we have the water crystal, which is pretty cool. So no HP loss there, just initially, when we first went up to it. But now since we have these water crystals, we won't get burned. But we still can't get past the fire. So what do we have to do? We're going to actually use the water crystals. Get to them. Low effect, subtitle here. Cool. And now the fire is gone. 
it's not there and we could pass through and go into this house and connect the maps to the interior then move on to save a person or something like that or go to a boss or a dungeon area or some kind of secret area too in your game so i'll show you how all this is set up really quickly so i may actually add this scenario into my own game um, i haven't yet so i'm kind of giving you guys some ideas here before i actually utilize them in my own game <laughs> all right so let's see how this is set up there's three pages pretty simple we have the fire graphic here um start when character touches event content is this so sound effect uh, we have the whole party losing uh three hp from being burnt uh, we have the subtitle here uh burned lost three hp uh, you could have um let me see here you could have an animation too there are some pretty cool animations here of being burned or fire Might be too much so to add into this particular um we can actually do that i guess yeah we could actually add that in there we'll put it on this event cool okay so we'll add that see what it looks like i guess all right guys then page two is this uh page two is the condition of having the water crystals uh so this will trigger page two uh so when you go to the satchel and you get the water crystals it goes to page two here uh, so you no longer are burnt by page one, losing the three HP because you have the water crystals. Okay, the event content's pretty simple. Uh, the whole party actually gains three HP back, so it's pretty cool. Um, you could take that off of there, and they would still lose the three HP from before. But I thought, well, why not have them explore? They find this, so they gain three HP back. They don't have to do that though. You can leave it out if you wanted to. Um, once they're burned, maybe they're burned in your game, my game. Maybe we'll give them 3 HP back. It's really up to you what you want to do. Uh, sound effects for the water. Subtitle here is 3 HP regained. Again, you can all customize this to however you want for your game. Um, of course, the item then, of course, is reduced. The water crystals here. And we got a switch as well. Okay? And that switch goes on to page 3. There's no graphic here now because once you use the water crystals, uh, the fire should be extinguished, right? Cool. No event content. The switch here is on. And of course, pass judgment then is selected off. That way you can actually walk through. It's kind of collision basically for this particular event. And there we go. We're actually going to save this now. Let's see how that flame effect actually looks. Let's see what the flame effect looks like. The animation. Kind of curious actually. Cool. All right, we're going to go and do our satchel. Water crystals. Cool. So we're not burned. Before we were burned right away because we actually didn't have the water crystal. But now we have the water crystals. We can use this. Cool. So we're actually missing the fire effect because we used the water crystals first. That's okay. Awesome. Let's restart the game and not use the water crystals. Test play. All right. So you see the flame animation now because I won't get the water crystals yet. <laughs> Yikes. Whoa, cool. <laughs> and you can put that before, maybe with the other sound effect too, or something like that, or just get rid of the sound effect because the animation actually has a sound effect with it, I believe as well, so there you go. We'll get the water crystals now again. Awesome, we'll get burnt. And use the item here, the water crystals. There we go. And again, if you would connect this map then to an interior of a house or some other point in your game, you can then walk in and gain access. So that's kind of a cool way to do it. You can use fire to block areas and then use some kind of item to be able to extinguish or remove the fire to gain access. And a fire could be anything. It could be a gate as well, and it could be a key. You know, same kind of concept. I thought the fire and the water crystals is a pretty cool, unique idea. So use these ideas, guys. This is Tips, Tricks, and Ideas number four for RPG Maker Fest tutorial videos. Hope you guys enjoy. Make sure you guys blast the like button for me. Leave your comments below, too. Um, what things are you working on in your game? Uh, leave your questions. We're trying to help you as much as we can. We really appreciate all of your tips, suggestions as well, and your help, too. I am Eddie Ray for NintendoTitChat.com. We will see you guys next time.